everyone, Namaku Karen. Welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about all of my cognitive science major classes that I took at UC Berkeley. A lot of you guys seem to find my cognitive science major video helpful, so if you guys want to know more about the major itself and what it is, feel free to check out the link. I'll put it up here or here. I still don't know where it is, probably here. But in this video, I'm gonna go sort of in depth about all of the classes that I took. Just a disclaimer, these are all based on my own personal experience. Please take my advice with a grain of salt. I just wanted to share how I felt about my classes in hopes that it'll be helpful to some of you guys. And also because we're living in this great COVID time. All of the reviews that I'm gonna be talking about is based on my experience on taking the classes in person. So policies might have changed, things might have changed, so just keep that in mind. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already. I'd appreciate it so so much and yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So CS61A. CS61A is the structure and interpretation of computer programs. This is one of those classes where you kind of feel like you know what's going on and then all of a sudden you could be lost in like a second. I would rate this class a solid 3 out of 5. I took this class with Professor De Niro, Professor John De Niro. He's actually a really really good teacher but the class in itself is not that great in my opinion because one i don't really like programming so the whole ordeal is just too much for me and two the class size is really really big i want to say the class size is probably in the thousands at the moment because it keeps growing every single year and i took it three years ago so as a result of that you don't really get the attention from tas and professors that you would want it's not really a problem with most classes but for cs61a you tend to want attention because you're gonna need a lot of help with the problem sets and with studying and stuff like that so the fact that the class is pretty big makes me kind of just like I want help but they won't give it to me I remember when I went to office hours for help on a project I literally waited in the queue for like a few hours just to get help on that one problem that I had that's why I didn't really particularly enjoy it your projects were time consuming your homework was time consuming and then it's time consuming to ask for help so it, the whole thing was just not a fun time for me yo is Kyle gonna be okay man um I don't think so he did a bunch of acid before yo my eyes are freaking huge so brain mind and behavior I would give this class a solid four out of five. I actually really enjoyed this class. The basis of this class is neuroscience, so you do learn about the structure of the brain and how chemicals and neurotransmitters move around in your brain, but I think Dr. David Presti's expertise in this field is drugs and psychedelics, so he was definitely able to apply these biology stuff into the world of drugs which honestly to me makes it a lot more interesting why i didn't give it a five out of five is because the class is a lot of reading and the exams aren't too intuitive in my opinion in order to do well i feel like you do have to do the readings because it's all based on the textbooks that he wrote you do have to memorize a lot of things to do well in the tests so just a heads up about that do you ever look at someone and wonder what is going on inside their head? So COGSI 1 is Introduction to Cognitive Science. I would give this class a solid 4 out of 5 as well. I really enjoyed this class because you pretty much learn every single field that there is in cognitive science. So if you do end up wanting to specializing in one thing later on, you kind of get a taste of it in this class. The reason why I wouldn't really give it a 5 out of 5 is because the class largely depends on who your GSI is. So each GSI, in my semester at least, they all each had their own little specialization so unless your GSI is doing research on something that you're really interested in I feel like you won't really get as much out of the class because then you won't be able to talk about your GSI's research and you won't be able to you know really get into the field that you're truly interested in and release all of those sounds that are trapped in your mind CS61A 
CS70. Discrete math and probability. So, <laughs> CS70 was arguably the hardest class that I've ever taken in my entire life. So I would rate this class a solid 1.5. I was gonna say 1, but I think I'll be generous and say 1.5. This class... You just don't know what's happening in this class. It was a lot of homework every single week and these problem sets in my opinion was not easy at all. So you do end up having to spend a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of time. There are a lot of resources though in the class. They have homework parties every single week where you could come in, work on problem sets, get help from TAs. But sometimes the TAs are less than helpful. In general, the material is something that's very hard to grasp and you do have to spend a lot of time if you want to do well in it. CS70 was just... It's not the move. Get to Del Taco! They got a new thing called free, free, free shavaka do. Next is Ling100. This is Introduction to Linguistic Science. I would rate this class a 4 out of 5. I actually really enjoyed linguistic science. It's something that I've never learned before. You pretty much learn like how the pronunciation of languages came about. You also learn about syntax and how sentences, how grammar were formed the way they are today. And you learn about that not just in the English language, you also learn about other languages as well. And I highly recommend this class if you're really interested in the way languages are structured because me personally, I'm really into that. I love learning about other cultures and other languages so definitely recommend this class if you're looking for a good upper division elective to take. really interesting. It's philosophy, so obviously it is very abstract. I would rate this class probably 2.75 out of 5. I want to say philosophy 3 is like the verbal version of CS70. So what I mean by that is you learn a lot about logic and if then statements and about human consciousness. I remember we spent a good deal of time arguing whether or not dogs have consciousness. I guess I enjoyed this class because it was sort of you know, you think about things a different way, but it's philosophy so you can argue your point and as long as you make a solid argument, then even though your GSI disagrees with you, they'll still think your point is a valid one. But I feel like that's a very subjective thing to grade off of. So I feel like the grading in this class could go one way or another depending on your GSI. I wrote a couple of essays for this class and I could get good grades on one, but less than good grades on another. And I wouldn't really get enough like solid feedback as to why I scored lower on one one than the other. Hi everyone, editing Karen here. So I decided not to put a meme for this class because this class is actually pretty heavy and I don't feel like it's right for me to make fun of the content that we covered in this class. Alright, so junior year, I took a lot of my cognitive science upper division classes. So one of them is Psych 131, which is developmental psychopathology, and I would rate this class a solid this class is about mental illnesses and how your experiences as a child shape the way you think today. So we do cover a lot of things about schizophrenia, depression, anxiety, eating disorders, and essentially we learn about how those things could develop in a person's mind. The class is not easy by any means. The material is pretty heavy and on top of that, you do have to read a lot and memorize a lot for the exam. But this class was very eye-opening because there is definitely a stigma surrounding mental illnesses, and this class definitely educates you on that topic. Psych C143 is language acquisition, and this class is honestly pretty cool. You learn basically about how babies acquire language, and that's something that I've never really thought about until I took this class. How do kids know to differentiate between a duck and a chicken? You don't know. This class was also pretty easy. It's completely open note, so the exams went by pretty easily. A caveat to it though is you read a lot of research papers and you do end up learning a lot about how to read research papers effectively but if that's something that you're not super interested in just know that there's a lot of those in this class. <laughs> so is it any wonder people are afraid of technology? Technology! Oh 
So then I took Social C167, which is virtual communities and social media. This was basically a take on technology from a sociology standpoint. So we do learn a lot about how technology impacts the way society functions today. And one of the topics that we really delved into this class, which is actually super interesting, is about the role of sex in Christianity. So if you're thinking like, what the heck is that? Exactly, that's exactly how I thought about it in the beginning. But the whole premise of it is how do humans interpret something that is taboo or unspoken things through the use of social media. It's pretty interesting stuff. You write essays about it. A great time. Okay, so senior year, I took Psych 133, which is the psychology of sleep. I would rate this class a solid 5 out of 5, okay? This class is honestly my favorite class in Berkeley ever. I took this class with Professor Matt Walker. He's British, so he's very easy to listen to. And he's also a very good teacher. He really goes in depth about the importance of sleep and how sleep can affect your psychological state. I found myself thinking that the material was very easy because I totally understood what he was teaching in class. If I could recommend one class out of my entire class schedule is that you take Psych 133. It is a very, very popular class and I could definitely understand why. And the content in this class definitely is something that you can apply to your daily life. Psych 160 is social psychology. I also really enjoyed this class. Psych 160 is the one class where I feel like you need, you need to take because the material in it definitely applies to the real world. I remember during my job interviews, I actually talked about this class and you go in depth about why humans behave the way they do and how certain social environments affect the way humans behave. And you go in depth about these really fascinating case studies. Highly recommend this class. Cogsci 131. Uh, yeah, you do analyze a lot of graphs. I really enjoyed this class because you essentially learn how to model psychological processes in your mind on the computer. Like, isn't that so fascinating? In the beginning of the class, we learned about classical conditioning. We literally modeled how humans learn through conditioning. I enjoyed this class because there was no midterms and no finals. The class is solely based on homework assignments every week. And in order to do well on the homework assignments, you have to know the mental concepts behind it. I feel like it's a sufficient amount of challenge that you feel really good once you finish your homework assignment and you're like, oh cool, I just, I just model classical conditioning. But it's not difficult where you feel like you're giving up or hopeless, like how I felt with CS70 and CS61A. I feel like the challenge lies in translating the mental concepts into code, but that's honestly really fun to me. So definitely, definitely recommend this class, especially if Professor Piantadosi is teaching it. Your speech was so good. Oh, I mean, like, it's like, they didn't even like try. It was just like improv. And, like, oh my god, why did you just take the freaking compliment? Ah! <laughs> so, in this class, the material itself is not my favorite thing in the world. So, this class is a lot more theoretical than, you know, learning about case studies, like how it was in social psychology. We talked a lot about Freud. We talked a lot about instincts, id, ego, super ego, stuff like that. But it is a lot of reading and it's a lot of theories. The class is structured in the way that even though you do need to do a lot of readings, there are weekly things that you have to do. So you are kind of forced to be on top of your reading. So I like that in that sense because you're not really fully relying on your self-discipline because y'all know how much I don't have that. As a result, you are always on top of your material. So by the time that the exam comes around, you are you have at least kind of been exposed to it because you were kind of forced to at least skim through it throughout the entire semester. Okay, so that is all for my major classes. Obviously, I didn't go through every single one of my classes. I just went through the ones that counted for my major program. I hope you guys found that helpful. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below and I will make sure to 
to get to them. And if you guys have any more requests, if you guys want to know more about anything related to cognitive science or college, also please leave them down below. I'll be happy to make that for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!